The following is a segment from the Carl King Podcast. If you enjoy this show, be sure to like, subscribe, and send us burritos. Up next, we've got a horror film called X. This one was screenwriter and directed by Ty West. And he is a guy from Delaware. This film stars Mia Goth as two characters, both a sort of younger and older version of herself, the antagonist and the protagonist. I watched the entire movie and didn't even know until I saw the credits. And I'm still confused about how that works, if it's time travel or something, but that's okay. Let's talk about that opening shot. On first glance, I thought this was a 4x3 aspect ratio, but I realized that's because it's just framed by a doorway. It gives it a retro look like Wes Anderson's Grand Budapest Hotel. If you recall, that was the first film to ever be shot in the taller and better 16x12 aspect ratio. I have an article about that on my site, and I will post a link in the show notes. So now let's move on and look at that first line of dialogue. Sheriff, you ought to come take a look at this. That is one of my least favorite cliche lines right up there with, We've got company. I don't know, they could have instead used a silent head gesture to indicate, Come with me, let's go over here, I want to show you something. Because why not keep that tense silence going? It's such a quiet scene, why ruin it? They go into the basement and shine the flashlight on the wall, and the sheriff says, My God. And it was a strong choice to not show what he is seeing. The filmmaker left it up to our imaginations. Good, good, good. Now, a couple of scenes later, we get an abrupt tonal shift to very lighthearted. It's daytime, and Mungo Jerry's In the Summertime is playing with all that ch 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 Yeah, everybody knows that song. We are told that the year is 1979, and our characters exit a strip club. And here we see one of the most truly horrific shots in this horror movie, those factories and the city in the background. It is a disgusting industrial nightmare. They get into a van, and it turns out that they are a small film crew. There's some fun and games, and then they stop at a gas station, but it begins with a close-up shot of a rooster. And I was thinking, wow, how did they get that rooster to stand there and then walk out of the shot with such perfect timing? At the end of the gas station scene, there's a transition to the next scene. Now, common transitions between scenes are hard cuts or wipes or dissolves. But instead, this transition cuts back and forth a few times, like the movie had to make up its mind before settling on the next scene. And this happens throughout the film. I don't know who made that idea up, but I have never seen that in my life. Very unique. There are also what I would call compound shots, where a character will leave the scene, and the camera keeps rolling and moves over to another mini-scene like panning over and pushing in on a television screen. Or it might start with a mini scene before moving over to the main scene. It gives the impression that the viewer kind of wandered into or out of it. Now, the premise of the story is this. The characters are shooting a porno movie out in the country. And at one point, the boom operator decides she wants to be on camera and be in the porno that they are making. And her boyfriend, the director, objects to it with, the story can't just suddenly change midway through. And she says, why? And he responds, because it just isn't done. I thought, okay, is this what the filmmaker intends to do? Because there's not much time left in the movie to pull it off. Anyway, throughout, there are drastic dynamic shifts. Like there's a scene with an old woman dancing to oldies music covered in blood. And I think watching films like this is very much like listening to a Mr. Bungle album, because it changes moods quickly. 
a common way to do that is to drop in unexpected music that contradicts the visuals. Someone once called that ironic counterpoint. And I'm into it. But then about three quarters of the way through the movie, I guess because it's now nighttime, the killings start. The slashings, the shootings, the stabbings. So I tuned out and took a break, went and did something else. And it's not that gore in movies upsets me. It just feels like a waste of time. It's too predictable like watching sports. I feel like the bad guy just lines them up and kills them all one by one. So maybe if the violence happened off screen, it would have been more powerful. But this movie actually shows it all up close and in full detail. It's a bunch of murders that have nothing to do with the setup of the story. Like, none of the backstory ever mattered. Is that good or bad? Well, sometimes it feels like the right thing. But to be honest, I enjoyed the movie a lot more before the horror began. By the way, this is another movie where a girl walks down into a dark basement. And guess what? Hey, I'm locked in. Same thing as in Barbarian. Oops. And in another scene, the porn star dude wakes up because his bedroom door creaks open. So he gets out of bed, naked, and walks out into the kitchen and drinks milk right out of the carton. Now, I don't remember the crew having milk with them in their van, so where did it come from? Maybe they got it at the convenience store? I don't know. But this scene was only the second thing that grossed me out in this horror movie. A naked porn star dude drinking out of the milk in the middle of the night. That's kind of rude and maybe even traumatic in my opinion. So then he turns and looks out the window and sees the old man outside in the dark with a flashlight. And he opens the door wide up and talks to him with his huge ding-dong flapping in the night breeze. He just stands there in the doorway proudly, legs apart, no attempt to cover himself. And then we get another one of those false triple-cut transitions when Mia Goth is running to the truck. Does anyone out there know if this was the first film with that type of transition? Send me a message, show at carlkingdom.com. Towards the end, we get a solid composite shot of the TV close-up and characters in the far background. And that's what I call divine intervention. Glory be to Jesus. In the final scene, the officer says, What do you wreck happen, Sheriff? And the sheriff says, How the hell should I know? Which is kind of funny, and it reminds me of the end of Burn After Reading, another Coen Brothers masterpiece. So my filmmaking lesson takeaway is related to cinematography. I think it's good to use those slow compound shots. Explore the scene and the location. You can start close up on an object, or like they did in this film, a rooster, and move out and then begin the main scene. You can wander back out of the scene at the end and move in on another detail. Because first of all, it's more creative. It adds atmosphere. And second, it'll help you avoid jump shots later in the editing because it gives you more material to play with. Now, I'm giving this one 5 out of 5 stars on Letterboxd, even though if it were up to me, I would have cut out the last quarter of the film. If you enjoyed this segment from the Carl King Podcast, remember, you can also listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or through an old rubber hose.